All right, so this is going to be a quick video on a couple things you can do uh, when you want to handle deadlocks um, or really code around them. Um, so real quick, I just created a couple temporary tables here, uh, employees and suppliers. These are global temporary tables, meaning they can be seen by anyone uh, connected to the SQL Server. That's what these double hashes do. Uh, and the examples we're going to be using today are for Microsoft SQL Server, just uh, FYI. Um, so we just loaded them up with some couple of dummy records here, um, and that's all this script does. Now, the other thing we're going to do to set this up is we're going to have two scripts, session one and session two, and they're going to be trying to do perform updates against the same tables. So I'm using this to just to simulate a deadlock. Um, and real quick, just to give credit where I found this, this is posted by I guess a Dave Mason on Stack Overflow. This uh, deadlock simulation script. So I just want to give credit where credit is due. Um, okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to run these uh, back and forth to simulate a deadlock. And I'm going to show you how you can handle this. So now we're going to run session one. We'll run this first statement to open a transaction. Okay. Session two, we're going to run the first statement, first update statement to again open up a transaction. Now, we're going to come back to session one. Okay. And we're going to run this command here, set deadlock priority, and we'll set it to low at first, okay? So when we set this deadlock priority to low, that gives this statement a low priority, so it should be chosen as the deadlock victim, okay? So we're going to run this update. It's going to sit there because this one has an open session. We're going to run this update, and now you'll see session one, and it did, should fail. And now you can see here at the bottom, session one was chosen as the victim, and that is because we chose the deadlock priority low. So we can specify in our SQL, if it's not a critical process, a critical statement, we could set the deadlock priority low, so it will always be chosen as the victim, okay? Um, so now let's go ahead and let's change this to high, okay? Let's commit this transaction, okay? And let's go back and do this, run this again, okay? So we're gonna run our first statement on session one, then we're gonna come back to session two, run our first statement, then we're gonna do this, we're just doing the same thing again, only this time the deadlock priority is high. So we'll run that, we'll run this, and now this should be chosen as the victim, and it was. So now session two, you can see at the bottom here, this was chosen as the victim, and then we'll come back to session one, and the one row affected, this update was successful. Um, so this is one tip uh, for handling deadlocks inside your SQL. Uh, so you would use this inside like a stored procedure. Um, if it was a critical transactional stored procedure, you might want to set the deadlock priority high. So this way, like, you know, a report or something like that that might be running against uh, the same data source doesn't um, cause your process to deadlock. All right, now another thing you can do, um, and this is useful if you're, let's say you're writing a report and you just have a, a select statement that's going against maybe a transactional system and you don't want it to lock anything up. Um, so we'll run this query select star from our temp em temporary employees table. You may already know about this, but what you can do is you can put with no lock and you can run that and that ensures that this read query, this query will not lock up this employees table. And if you were joining multiple tables, right, so if you had um, inner join on some other table, right, uh, whatever, temp table, some, it could be any table, let's just say some table, you would again, you do it for each table in your query, right, so you could do it there, and yada, yada, yada. So that's another thing you can do uh, to manage your deadlocks. All right, so that'll do it. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell. And also check out jamestechtips.com for more BI-related content. And thanks for watching.